Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for um, connecting today to the webinar by Francine Omarante. Uh, welcome to the third season of the APG Salt Basin webinar series. I have the honor of representing the team today and welcome our speaker. She is a research assistant at Universidad Federal do Rio de Janeiro in Brazil, and she's working on the famous Albion carbonates of shore Brazil. She completed a PhD in geoscience at the same university in Brazil, sponsored by CMP, focusing on basin analysis. And during her PhD, she did uh, she was working on understanding the impact of rift topography and the subsequent sag and passive margin stages. She also spent six months as a visiting uh, scholar at Imperial College London in the United Kingdom with the Basin Research Group, where she was conducting research on salt tectonics. So I think we can start the webinar now. Welcome, Francine. Thank you, Clara. Thank you for the presentation. I'm going to share my screen now. Is it okay? You can see it? Oh, good. Yes, thank okay. you. So let's begin. First, I'd like to thank the APG Salt Basin's Technical Interest Group for inviting me to present this webinar. My name is Francine Amarante, and I will present the webinar called The Role of Pre-Salt Rift Architecture on Salt Tectonics in the Campus Basin Offshore, Southeast Brazil. The co-authors of this study are Christopher Jackson, Leonardo Pichel, Clayton Scherer, and Juliano Kuschle. So here's the outline of this presentation. First, I'll discuss uh, passive margin salt tectonics, then the objectives, location and geological context, data and methods, results and discussions, and the conclusions. Salt-related deformation in passive margin basins is triggered by gravitational forces. In campus basin, salt flow is related to gravity gliding. The, cl the classical models of gravity gliding affirm this process originates three kinematic linked domains of deformation. An upper slope extensional domain, a contractional domain at the toe of slope, both separated by an intermediate translational domain where deformation is thought to be relatively mild. The structures in the extensional and contractional domains form parallel to the margin and perpendicular to the direction of salt movement. It is important to stress that the classical models take into account a smooth base salt relief. However, where the salt deposition occurred in the SAG or early post rift stage, which is the case for a campus basin, the base salt surface is not smooth, but rugose with significant topography inherited from the rift phase. There are studies that demonstrate this inherited relief can strongly influence on posterior salt tectonics. Here's an illustration from Sean Evans uh, from the work of Cobold and Zap Mary 91. These authors concluded that uh, convex and concave segments of base salt ramps may cause locally divergent and convergent gliding. And this generates local zones of extension and contraction, respectively. A recent work from Dooley and collaborators in 2017, they concluded that the salt flux over a subsalt step can be associated with local acceleration and deceleration, which creates local hinges of extension and contraction, uh, respectively. Critically, these complex low constraints can overprint the, mar the margin scale patterns of deformation, which I explained in the previous, previous slide. With that said, the objectives of this uh, study is to characterize the salt tectonic structural styles and related evolution of salt and overburden structures in the South Central Campus Basin, Southeast Brazil. To investigate the evolution of extensional and contractional deformation through time and space, 
and finally discuss the effects of base salt relief on the distribution, origin, and evolution of salt and overburden structures. Location and geological context. The study area is in the South Central Campus Basin, which is delimited in blue here in this map. And it encompasses important oil fields with post salt reservoirs in the proximal region. The Campos Basin originated during rifting of the Gondwana supercontinent that culminated uh, with the opening of the South, Atl South Atlantic Ocean. The basin is typically divided into three tectonic stratigraphic sequences from the base to the top rift, sag, and drift stages. And by the end of the sag stage, which is uh, known as also as the early post-rift, during the late Aptian, a, th a thick salt layer was deposited in response to exotic marine water influx into the basin. So this blue rectangle here shows the intervals we'll be looking at in this presentation, the salt layer, uh, late Albion, and the drift sediments, the overburdened sediments. The Campos Basin comprises two distinct tectonic contexts. The first is related to the rift stage of the basin. The main structures are depicted on the map on the left here. In orange are the basement highs and in green the basement lows. The second tectonic context is related to salt tectonics. Uh, according to Davidson and collaborators 2012, the Campos Basin is divided into a proximal extension domain and a distal contraction domain with a sheet of lacunal salt over the altar high of the basement. Uh, this section below here shows the general context of the study area, here delimited in these brown lines. So it, in, it comprises the external high and the external low of the basement and both the extensional and contractional domains of salt tectonics. Data and methods. The study area has a total area of about 23,500 uh, square kilometers. It includes 146 2D seismic lines, 30 wells, and one 3D volume. The inline and cross line spaces in the volume are 12. 0.5 meters, and it has an area of approximately 2,900 square kilometers. The seismic data is time migrated, zero phase processed, with a display following SAG normal polarity. Here's the stratigraphic column of Campus Basin again, showing the mapped horizons, which you'll be seeing in some seismic lines I'll show throughout the presentation. So we have the base salt in purple, top salt in pink, top albion in blue, top cretaceous in green, top paleogene orange, and top neogene in yellow. Now let's move to the results and discussions. First, base salt. Here's a base salt structural map before and after the pull-up correction. For the pull-up correction, which is very accentuated here to the distal portion where we have thick salt, for this correction, we use the equa this equation and we have made some manual adjustments and here is the final map that we got. The base salt surface dips regionally to southeast with a mean dip of two degrees. Local changes in dip angles and directions define base salt ramps. They are highlighted in green in this map in the middle. The base salt ramps trend northeast and have a linear geometry, locally convex and concave here to uh, the southwest. The interpreted ramps define the boundary between the external high and the external low, both uh, basement structures related to rifting. The ramps have a maximum structural relief of circa 900 milliseconds uh, to weight travel time, which equals about two kilometers, and they dip seaward from three to nine degrees. 
The base salt surface average deep varies along strike and presents greater values to the southwest when compared to the northeast. Now I'll present the interpreted salt structures. Here's a salt thickness map. And here's the same map with the interpreted salt structures drawn onto it. First ones are extensional rollovers. They are in uh, yellow in this map. It is important to know that in this region, there are proximal salt rollers that do not show in this map scale. They are too small. Extensional collapse diapiric salt walls, they are in orange. Here, they are concentrated in this uh, intermediate portions, uh, central to southeast, southwest. Salt anticlines and pillows, they are colored in beige when originated by extension. In this case, they are here in this intermediate portion of the study area. And they are colored in purple when originated by contraction. They appeared here in the intermediate and distal areas. Diapiric salt walls and stocks are colored in pink and they also concentrate to the distal area of the study polygon. The overburden structures are shown here in this uh, thickness map from the top salt to the top Cretaceous. First one are uh, rafts. The rafts do not show on the map. They appear in this region here. They are too small for this map scale. They will only show in individual seismic lines, which I'll present later on. Salt detached normal faults. They are outlined in black. They occur both in the proximal and here intermediate regions. They occur in a variety of settings. Uh, the limit, the limiting salt rollers, salt grave, uh, I'm sorry, overburden gravens, displacing anticline crests, and along the flank of uh, diapirs like this image below. Most faults deep seaward. Extensional turtle structures, they are outlined in orange, here, orange lines. They occur mostly center and southwest. Ramp sink line basins, which are structures related to seaward salt translation. They are shown in our map in beige areas here, and they concentrate to the northeast. Mini basins are shown in these pink areas, and contractional folds are shown with purple lines. Based on the distribution of structures related to salt tectonics, we identified three domains of helokinetic deformation. A proximal extensional domain subdivided into subdomains E1 and E2, a multi-phase domain intermediate with hybrid, hybrid extensional and contractional structures, which I'll detail later in this presentation, and a distal contractional domain here in purple. Now I'll talk about each of these domains in detail. First, the extensional domain. It's shown in yellow. It occupies nearly half of the study area, average width of circa 77 kilometers. The base salt average deep, we can see here in this map, letter D, is uh, 2.5 to 4.5 degrees, which is relatively high for the study area because interpreted base salt ramps are located in this domain. It is important to know that the average dip is higher to the southwest when compared to the northeast. The subdomain E1 salt thickness varies from 0 to 300 milliseconds uh, to a travel time. Salt structures are salt rollers and small pillows, and they are visible only in individual seismic lines. They do not show on the map. Subdomain E2 the, uh, salt thickness varies from 0 to 1450 milliseconds. Salt structures are salt rollers in yellow, extensional diapirs in orange, and extensional anticlines in beige. The overburden structures are shown in this map here. 
they are uh, ramp syncline basins, extensional turtle structures, and extensional rollovers, as well as normal faults. Now I'll show six seismic lines in deep direction across the study area to illustrate the salt and overburden structures of the extensional domain. In these slides are lines uh, A, B, and C. A and B are to the northeast and C central north. In the northeast, the salt in E1 is absent or it forms small pillows. In E2, uh, there are salt rollers associated to rollovers in B and C and ramp syncline basin here in A. Here we have line D located in the central south and E and F in the southwest. E1 in these three lines is characterized by small salt rollers associated to early Albion rafts. Uh, in E2, there are um, salt rollers as well associated to extensional rollovers, and there are extensional or collapsed diapirs here, here, and here associated to gravens of the overburden as well as some extensional turtle structures, turtle structures. Salt and overburden structures vary along deep, defining subdomains E1 and E2, but they also vary along strike within the extensional domain. To the northeast, E1 salt is absent or it forms small pillows. E2 salt rollers are associated to uh, ramp syncline basins and rollovers. Center and southwest, in E1, there are salt rollers associated to early Albion rafts, and in E2, extensional and collapsed diapirs, salt rollers associated to rollovers and extensional turtle structures. Fortune collaborators, 2004, relate the zoning of the structures with variation in the strain rate strain rate within the ductile layer, which in this case is salt. And the variations in strain rate are mainly controlled by the local dip of the base salt surface. When the, the authors say that when the base salt, uh, the base of the salt is steeper, there's a higher strain rate within the salt. And when it is gentler, the ductile strain rate is lower. The authors also demonstrate that salt rollers form on steeper baser, base, uh, basal slopes. And this applies to compost basin for both subdomains E1 and E2, where the salt rollers pointed here with these arrows, typically occur on two base salt ramps, which are highlighted in uh, these purple triangles here. On the other hand, the extensional diapirs dominate on gentler slopes where the strain rate is lower. Depending on the length and inclination of uh, the base salt ramps, the salt rollers can be associated with different structures in the overburdened sediments. In the northeast and north central, A, B, and C, the ramps are narrower, narrower and they favored the formation of ramp syncline basins. Why the ramps within E1 favor the generation of a series of small uh, salt rollers associated to Albion rafts. Now the contractional domain, it is shown in purple here in the map. It has an average width of 39 kilometers. The base salt deep varies from 1 to 0.5 degrees. The salt is thickest in this domain. It reaches 3,000 milliseconds to weight travel time. The salt structures in this domain are salt walls, stocks, and contractional anticlines. The overburden structures, mini basins, and folds. Now the same seismic lines I've shown before. 
the most prominent structures of this uh, structure of the contractual domain is this large salt anticline that shows in line B and C. It's here on the map. This contractional anticline has polyharmonic folding. I'll talk about this type of structure next. In this domain, there are also site diapirs, salt diapirs, that have developed partially by active diapirism resulting from contraction. This is indicated by arching and folding on top of the diapirs, and also by the so-called mega flaps, shown here in A, which are defined by inclined overburden layers along one flank of the diapir, and it sometimes can reach the surface like it's the case here in uh, line A. Again, here uh, to the south, central, and southwest, there is arching directly above the salt diapirs. And here, indeed, there's a folded mega flap indicating that this diapir likely developed from a salt anticline. Another indicator of contraction in this domain is the abrupt shift in depot centers of mini basins, shown here in line E and in line F. Here's a balanced kinematic model made by Leonardo Pichel showing the evolution of salt and overburning structures in different time. Uh, Miocene, Paleogene, Upper Cretaceous, and Upper Albion. I'm showing this figure here so we can talk about the polyharmonic anticlines. It shows how early short wavelength folds form when the overburden is thin, either by local variations in salt flux across a seaward dipping ramps or by regional shortening. Here is uh, the case where we have the upper Albion restored. We can see here uh, the overburden is still thin. We see this high frequency uh, short wavelength folds. Dooley and collaborators associate this process to the movement of salt across a ramp, that is, when it moves from a subsalt high block to a subsalt low block. The local vari variations in salt flux generate this uh, contractional hinge at the base of the ramp. This figure illustrates the formation of high frequency folds in the overburden as salt passes the local contractional hinge at the base of the ramp in time one, two, and three. Here we have the distal limit of the fold belt uh, each time it is further seaward. After the formation of these early folds, the gradual sedimentation simultaneous with salt movement caused a progressive increase in the fold wavelength due to uh, an increase in the strength of the folded layer. And that's how we form the polyharmonic anticlines. Now to the multi-phase domain. It has an average width of circa 25 kilometers. It is shown here in pink on our map. The basalt average dip is 0.5 to 1.5 degrees. And the salt thickness reaches 2100 milliseconds TWT. Salt structures are rollers and hybrid extensional contractional structures. The overburden structures are ramp syncline basins, one ramp syncline basin here to the northeast, folds and faults. Here we can see that in the northeast lines A and B, the translation dominates and it is associated with mild extension show, shown by the development of faults and salt rollers and this wide ramp syncline basin. In the center, we already see the presence of hybrid extensional and contractional structures, which also characterize the multi-phase domain to the southwest. 
Before I discuss these uh, hybrid extensional contractional structures found in the multiphase domain, I will talk about uh, the ramps inclined basins found in campus basin. The ramps inclined basins are interpreted both in the extensional and the multiphase domains. And in campus basin, they are hybrid structures for they form in response to translation and extension. A long strike or over time, like we can see here in the balanced kinematic model, these structures are related to extensional rollovers. This means that translation of salt and its overburden down deep is partially accommodated by the coeval formation of salt detached normal faults. The balanced kinematic model shows that the RSBs register circa 28 kilometers of horizontal translation in a rate of circa 0.5 millimeters a year going uh, from the late Albion to the middle Paleogene. Now we'll discuss the hybrid extensional contractional structures found in the multiphase domain. The first ones are diapirs with passive and active growth history with landward dipping faults. It's this structure here. They define the seaward limits of extensional turtle structures. The second hybrid structures are anticlines that record posterior uh, extension and faulting. It is the structure two in this figure. This figure shows three seismic lines of the 3D volume. They are each 1.5 kilometers apart from each other. The last two hybrid structures are probably re related to the same process, which is the seaward migration of extensional deformation over time. The down deep migration of extension occurs after grounding of up deep structures due to salt welding and or margin progradation. The third hybrid structure is an extensional diapir subsequently squeezed. It is a structure one of this figure. One of the possible origins of this structure is, is intense faulting and volcanism in the region. We can see some volcanic features in red here that may conditional salt tectonics locally. Another possibility is the redirection of salt flow when it passed through a concave segment of a base salt ramp. This may have created local zones of compression that may have affected the development of this diapir. Uh, so this figure that shows the three lines of the 3D volume show how the multiphase evolution of the structures in the multiphase domain are heterogeneous and may go unnoticed in an isolated 2D ana analysis. Here we see, we better observe compression of this diapir in line B, but it is also present here in line C where there is folding above the graben. But if we only saw line A, it would be difficult to conclude that. The multi-phase domain is located at the toe of slope from the external high to the external low. This figure summarizes that although the classic models of gravity gliding and spreading on salt influence passive margins are correct, they are rather oversimplified and fail to explain the diversity of salt and overburden structures that we interpreted in Campos Basin. The conclusions of this study are uh, variations in deep angle and direction in the base salt surface define base salt ramps, which delineate the boundary between external high and external low basement structures originated by root tectonics. <laughs> I just noticed this typo here. I think my PowerPoint corrected for Portuguese. <laughs> the distribution of the interpreted salt and overburning structures define three domains of thin skin, salt detached deformation, extensional, subdivided into subdomains E1 and E2, contractional and multi-phase. We interpreted three multi-phase structures, contractional anticlines that were subjected to later extension and normal folding, 
diapirs with passive and active growth, later subjected to regional extension, developing landward deep in normal faults on the landward, fl of landward flank. And lastly, an extensional diapir that was subsequently squeezed. The structures in the multi-phase domain formed in response to multiple kinematic variable, extensional and contractional phases of deformation over time and space. Base salt relief caused local variations in salt flux affecting the regional domains of deformation, controlling or influencing the types of generated salt and overburden structures and their evolution through time and space. And lastly, Ramsey inclined basins provide a record of circa 28 kilometers of horizontal translation of salt and its overburden in a rate of circa 0.5 millimeters a year from the end of the Alban to the middle Paleogene. Here uh, are the references that I cited throughout this presentation. We invite you to read a recently published paper called Pre-Salt Rift Morphology Control Salt Tectonics in the Campos Basin Offshore Brazil. The preprint is available on Earth Archive. Here's the link. Thank you very much. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to contact me through my email or social media accounts. Thank you. That was great. I Fantastic, Francine. Thank you. Uh, can I stop sharing? Sorry about that. Yes. Right. I can't hear her. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's an a echo with me. Yes, we have an echo from, from Connor. He's getting ready to uh, moderate the Q&A. So we have some questions there. Lovely. Sorry, I was just sorting out my technical issues there, guys. Uh, yeah, I'll run through the Q&A if you're OK with that, Francine. Yes, sure. Lovely. Um, so our first question is from uh, Gerardo Gaitan. Hi there, apologies if I missed it. How did you work out uh, the slope angle of the pre-salt layer? Did you use depth conversion or was it previously published? Oh, thank you for this. I think I'm gonna share it again, <laughs> the screen, just okay. so we can discuss this best. Let me put here in the, this figure. So here uh, we performed a depth conversion for the subsalt layer, the pre-salt, using some of the wells that we have information on. We had some uh, shack shots and sonic logs. We used that for the depth conversion. And we measured the height and the distance to calculate the degrees and the structural relief. it i think i hope i answered fantastic yep um our second question is from elia sadale um why are the salt deposits uh seem to be non-existent beyond the espiritu santo basin there seem to be no salt in the kamamu almada the sergip algoish and the paraiba basins there are salts uh above the Espiritu Santo layer, yes, I think up until the northeast. Let me see if I can find my map here. So we don't have salt below uh, south from Santos Basin. Here we have the Florianopolis Volcanic High, which delimited the salt deposition along our margin. But salt deposition goes all the way north to the northeast, yes. And I think there are some studies about that from Davison 2012, 2007 that discuss the ages. I think there's a bit of an age difference between these and the evaporites from the Southeast and when we compare to the Northeast, but I'm not sure which one it is, but there is, there is salt deposition here. Yes, we don't have salt deposition in the North. I think because we had different opening processes here we had something of a more um, strike sleep related uh, opening of the South Atlantic, a bit different from what we have in the South of Atlantic when we compare to equatorial margins here. 
Fantastic. Um, our next question is from Mark Rowan. Francine, thanks for the clear presentation. Uh, you see overprinting of extension on early contractional structures, but were you able to map out how extensional and contractual domains shifted over time from the Albion onwards? Hi, Rowan, thank you for the question. We have seen some inversion of uh, anticlines, which is shown here, structure two. So we first had the formation of this large anticline here, and this was subsequently faulted. This occurs here in the multi-phase domain to the southwest. We also have um, some other examples. I don't know if I have the lines here to show you. I think here in this region, but for some reason, the salt anticlines concentrated in the multi-phase domain here to the southwest, and in the contractional domain, they concentrated to the northeast. We see that inversion, contractional to extension, only in the multi-phase domain. We don't see that in this uh, area of the contractional domain. We believe it's because uh, it's due to the migration of extensional deformation over time. Maybe eventually can reach here due to uh, the grounding of salt structures further up deep. Fantastic, thank you. Thank you. I'm just going through some more questions here. Um, expand this. So Sergio Toledo has a question. Um, good presentation, thank you. Could the salt flux have an erosional role over the pre-salt surfaces? That is a good question. There's a paper from Thiago Alves, I think 2017, that affirms that this can happen, but I'm not sure the salt has this capacity to erode subsalt sediments. We are uh, uh, performing a study on that, and we believe there are some evidence of erosion in the subsalt sediment, but we believe it's due to exposure and uh, subaerial uh, erosion and remotion of the, the material and not by salt. We don't think, my co-authors and I, we don't think that salt has the ability to remove the sediments underneath it. But it's, yeah, I'm not, not sure how to explain to you the physics of that. Maybe oh, that's can, great. Yeah. <laughs> but that's we great. don't, Cheers. yeah, we don't think so. Um, there's lots of really kind messages in the chat if you want to have a look over them. Uh, the oh. next question we have is from uh, by Haki. Hi, Dr. Francine. How do we know the effect of salt dipping on wellbore stability when drilling? For example, drilling through the salt structure at 45 degrees, uh, is there any potential instability? any simulations we can do maybe from geomechanical studies? That's an excellent question and I'm not sure I know how to answer it. What I can advise you to do as a geologist is look for salt uh, welds. We have some salt structures where salt is very, very thick and adjacent to these structures, there's often salt welds, regions where salt is very thin or absent and maybe you can look to, uh, to drill, to uh, do the wells in these areas of thin salt rather than in the, the thick salt, but I'm not sure about the geomechanics of, of the drilling process. I don't know. Lovely. <laughs> Our next question is from uh, Yalex uh, Alexandridis. Uh, great presentation, thank you. Since you have well data from the salt layer, have you observed any relation uh, between the evaporite composition uh, and the style of deformation? That's a good question. We, we hoped that we would find some, but unfortunately, let me show you the map of our data set. All of our wells, they are drilled here in the proximal region where salt is very thin or absent. So they chose, I think, the regions where salt was the least thick possible. 
So that's why we couldn't see, we couldn't relate. It's mostly halite here that we have described with the, from the Petrobras wells, mostly halite. And because of that, because it's only located here where salt is very, very thin, we cannot relate the salt composition with the salt structures. But yeah, that's an excellent suggestion. I would hope that we can find maybe for our next study to get some wells more to the distal portion. Maybe we can do that analysis. That's a great, great question. Fantastic. We've got one more from uh, Arioerdi. Um, hey, Ari regarding Ari. the polyharmonic fold, do you also consider an alternative interpretation that the fold might be related to salt translated across an updip ramp uh, during the early stages if there is any local high uh, in this basin? Yes, Orio, thank you for that question. We have discussed this possibility. We do discuss it in our paper, but it is possible that the polyharmonic folding formed during the translation across multiple salt ramps. We also discuss that this posterior faulting of the anticlines may be related to salt translation across a second ramp where on the top of a second ramp, we would have an extensional ring hinge on the top of the ramp that could have caused this uh, later faulting and extension. So yes, we, do we, we did think about that, um, that possibility and we discussed, we address it in our paper. We just think it's more likely an easier explanation where the, the extension migrates through time uh, C word, but it is it is a valid point. Of course, yes, we it is possible as well. Very good. We've got one more question um, from Tatiana Petrovska. Could you please comment on the purple highs beneath the thick salt structures, uh, the nature and the origin of those highs? All right. Good question. So we have these. Um, I'm gonna put in this line, maybe we can discuss. Here it's, we can see some of the sediments of the scene rift separated by some horses or some basement high. So we interpret that these ramps are related to grabbins and horse forming during the rift process of the basin, which is the early phase of the basin. So we have two main, basement structures uh, described here by Guardado and collaborators in 2000, which are the external high and the external low. So here are two huge, uh, huge basement structures that will define our ramps. And within each structure, we can see, we can define gray, gray bins and horse, but they are, um, uh, these grabbins and horses are part of a larger basement structure, also related to variations in the rift style of the basin. We are working, we didn't detail them very much in this paper, but we are working on the next project that will address these variations in basement highs, basement lows, and relate the top free salt erosion with these basement irregularities. Very nice. Uh, still lots of uh, nice comments coming in from Torsten and Carl and Kelly saying great presentation. Um, if there's no more questions, so uh, Sue Pritchett is asking if you could share the, the final slide with the Earth Archive link on it, just so people know about your, can copy the link down and get access to your Oh paper. yes, of course, of course. I'll share again. But I think, uh, unless you, if anyone has any more questions, please do send them in. I'll share it again in a minute, this one, yes. Exactly, lovely. Uh, you can search for the name. It's the same name of the paper here. You can search that in Earth Archive and you will find it just, just fine. Also, it is in my uh, ResearchGate account, if you need it, the link. So we can, we can also share it um, on our Twitter and uh, LinkedIn and stuff. Yes, after this of as course. well, so that everybody can uh, can get access to that really nice work. 
Nice. Thank you very much for participating. I yeah, really like the questions. Was a lot of them. I'm sorry I wasn't able to answer all of them. But I hope that I could uh, clear some of your questions. If, if you have further questions, if you rewatch it and then you think of additional questions, you can email me or talk to me in social media. I'll be happy to discuss with you. Yeah, and if anyone wants to send us questions to the, the APG Salt Basins email, we can also forward them to Francine if you would like that. Yes, well. of course. That was great. Thank you so much. Amazing. Thank you. Great work. Thank you. Thank you for your invitation. It was an honor to me. Really liked being here. Thank you. Okay. It was a pleasure to watch it, Francine. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks. Bye, everybody. Cheers, bye guys. Bye. Have a lovely day.